World Wolf Tracks, guys. I'm Bobby the Wolf Mullins, your paranormal shock jock, your DJ, the outlaw, the undesirable, the one that brings them all down. Yeah, that's me, number one bad boy of paranormal. Anyway, let me give my disclaimer right quick. If you don't like what you see, what you hear, the topics, the language, or the equipment, by God, turn me off. But if you like what you see, what you hear, the topics, the language, the equipment, my girl, turn me on. I'm going to send that one out to Rick Reardon of Paranormal's Raw Truth. Uh, go to GTN, uh, Ghost Tales Television Network, or ghosttalestv.com, and find out the show times. Uh, very interesting show, very nice guy, kind of a, kind of a crazy redneck like me. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say hi to Rick, and uh, peace and love, brother, peace and love. And I'm tossing down one for you. <laughs> oh, and I want to give a shout out to another guy. Um... He, he, uh, I've had one too many of these. Sue me. Uh, Brian Berner of Spirit Factivity. Uh, he's on the GTN Network also. Really nice guy. I talked to him on the phone a couple weeks back. Seems like a real level-headed kind of kind of northern guy. The Yankee, I guess you'd call him. Well, so is Rick for that matter, but he looks like a redneck. <laughs> but, hey, that's probably why I like him so much. And, uh, oh, Brian, he's a good kid, good guy, and he's with Spirit Factivity. And check that show out, too. It's pretty good. It's on the GTN Network. Y'all check them out. And, uh, man, tune in. They do some crazy stuff. And they find crazy things. You know what I'm saying? And that's what this business is all about. This whole genre of paranormal is about finding the evidence and showing you guys. And maybe opening your eyes and opening your mind. You know what I mean? But anyway, guys, look. I, uh, I got kind of a question for you. There was something. Let's talk UFOs, shall we? There was something that happened in 1967, October 4th, in Canada. Okay, okay. what's it on the boot? <laughs> anyway, it happened near Shag Harbor. Now, sources say, in 1967, October 4th, there was a row of glowing orange lights. So they, they described them as what looks like um, the end of a hot poker after it's been in a fire, that weird orange glow it gives. But there was a row of them, large to small. And it was flying on the skyline. And then all of a sudden it took a 45 degree angle straight down and landed in the harbor. Now, it crash landed or whatever. Well, the residents thought it was a plane. Well, there's no proof that it wasn't a plane. There's no proof that it was a plane. Uh, people called in. Local authorities were called in. People, The local authorities thought the people were nuts. Now, once all these calls started coming in, the local law enforcement had to pay attention to this start calling the proper authorities. Well, the naval, the Canadian naval or whatever the hell they got up there, responded. Sent divers, went down looking. Local fishermen got in their boats, and they were expecting the worst, right? They were thinking they're going to find parts of a plane, pieces of bodies, you know, floating in the water, and they found nothing. Weird orange foam all over the water. Now, according to one source, a guy tried to use a fish net or some sort of scoop and scoop some of this foam out. Well, when he did, the foam wouldn't come out of the water. And, you know, you scoop stuff out of water before it leaves a residue, at least on whatever you're trying to scoop with. There was no residue. And it glowed orange. They don't know what the hell it was. Never got a sample of it. Just eyewitness account. Now, in saying that, they dove. Now, Shag Harbor, from what I've understood, is, um, is very murky. Murky. Yeah, sorry. Like I said, one too many of those. Uh, it's very murky. Now, uh, so you got about 20 feet that you can see. The other time when you go down, it's a little too murky to, you know, see your hand in front of your face. But they took diving teams down there to see if they could find, I don't know, wreckage of this plane. Because everyone thought it was a plane at first. Now, they found no wreckage. Now, this gets a little weird. A reporter was covering it. I forget the guy's name. Google it if you want to. You know me. Google if you need it. Anyway, he was pulled off the case or the story, and another reporter was put on, and this reporter used a Catholic preacher or priest. Uh, his name was Father Bert 
Gaffney. Now, the weird thing about this guy is he is a debunker of the paranormal, like UFOs and whatnot. Now, Dr. Uh, um, sorry, Reverend, uh, or Father, sorry, Father Reverend. There's so many titles. You know, geez, get over yourself. Anyway, Father uh, uh, Gaffney. <laughs> wow, hard to remember that dude's name. I don't know why. You know, one of these. Was not only a preacher or reverend or father or whatever the hell it was, but he was also an astrologer, astro astronomist, whatever, looks at the stars. Now, if he's Catholic, they're not supposed to believe in life in outer space. What the hell is he looking at? Now, he said that things can be dis explained through natural occurring phenomenon, like meteor strikes, uh, planes going down, military objects falling from the sky. Okay, well, I, I, you know, I agree. That's that's one way to look at it. You know me, I got to look at both sides. Hey, now look, hold on, whoa, whoa, hold the phone. Don't think, hey, Bobby's siding with the weird reverend. No, no, no. Relax, cool your jets. Have a, look, chill out. Have another one of these. Let's watch Wolf Tracks. Let's listen. Let's pay attention. Let's think a little. Okay, now. Because he's a religious figurehead, everybody believes him, and this gets swept under the carpet, right? Now, they have eyewitnesses of these crazy things, multiple eyewitnesses. Now, this guy, all right, this guy, Chris Stiles. No relation to AJ Styles on wrestling. <laughs> wow, weird reference. Anyway, this guy, Chris Stiles, he is a ufologist, I believe, and he dug up some uh, declassified files on the Shag Harbor incident. Come to find out that Canadi uh, the, the Canadians were involved in a recovery program for this UFO. Now, the crazy thing is, now, if there was no such UFO and everybody's debunking it, and everybody's saying it's just a plane crash and whatever, number one, if it's a plane crash, where are the parts? Where are the pieces? Where's all the, the fuselage? And Because some, some pieces of the plane float. All right, where's all that at? Now, the crazy thing is, while they're looking in Shag Harbor, there was a military concentration in a place called Shelburne. They were looking for the same objects in Shelburne. Now, there was military vessels at Shelburne. Warships. Okay? Battleships and whatever. And they're sending dive teams down, all kind of crazy shit. Looking for, which according to the documents, a UFO. It's actually written in ink. On the document, UFO and underscored three times. And this is a declassified file. Now, while the divers were down there, they have a report or an eyewitness account. or what, You take those as you will. You know, some things can be made up. You know, like when you tell one story to somebody and then five other people tell the same story, it gets a little uh, made, uh, you know, added on or taken away from. Well, according to this eyewitness account, the... Uh, the diver said he went down and with the team, and there was a glowing orange light, but there wasn't just one. There was two. All right? There was two glowing lights. Now, one light was working on the other one, kind of sending energy, you know, via, like, it was glowing and sending energy to the other one and all that mess. Well, um, now, almost as if it was repairing it. Now, whether there's any validity to that or not, I have no idea, but this is what I'm talking about. I want you to think. I want you to think about what this could be. Um, the naval fleet, while stationed there in Shelburne Harbor, I guess that's what they call it, while stationed in Shelburne Harbor, had a run-in with a Russian sub. Now, the relevance to this, I have no idea. You know, it's just part of the story or the legend of Shag Harbor. This Russian sub comes in. They pick it up on radar. They go to intercept because they're trying to do their own deal with these supposed quote-unquote UFOs. Now, while the Russian sub is coming in and they're going to intercept, these orange objects, these orange glowing objects under the water start moving. And when they start moving, they end up taking a path straight up like at an angle and go. they leave the water, basically. They leave the harbor and fly off into space, according to eyewitnesses. Now, the relevance to this, there's an eyewitness in a lighthouse 
who said at 10 o'clock, which is the same time the military said these things flew off, he noticed it over uh, Lower Woods Harbor, these glowing objects flying over them a little after 10. Well, these things left at 10. According to the military document, they left at 10 p.m. And then he noticed it a little after 10. So that, that gives you a time parameter of when this stuff was happening. It gives you some relevance to maybe there's some truth in this. All right, now, the guy at the lighthouse finds a metal cylinder washed up on shore. He, he describes it as 19, 20, 25 inches long and about, I don't know, 10 inches across. Now, now inside it were a bunch of tubes, he says, and wires and, you know, different equipment devices, whatever, and a weird smell, but it had washed up on shore. Now, he said he used to work for the military, so he don't want to disclose what he thinks it was. All right, no big deal. Now, I respect that, because you don't want the guys in a black suit showing up at your door, knocking, going, hello. You know, you don't want that. But, according to legend, it's a UFO. But now, when you think about it, this is 1967 during the Cold, Cold War. Russia's doing the whole thing with missiles, ballistic missiles. We're doing the whole thing with ballistic missiles. Could this be, I don't know, could this be an unmanned spy drone that we were working on early on? Could this have been a missile project? Could this have been some sort of spy plane? Anything that crashed? Could they have made it crash? Or did it accidentally, you know, could it have malfunctioned and landed in Shag Harbor? But then, if it did, we don't have anything in our military that can go from the air to the water and then back out again. So, where did that come from? See, that's what I'm talking about. There's so many things involved with some of these UFO sightings that you have to go, what the? Uh, but it makes you think. And that's what I enjoy about it. So you can see both sides of this, guys. You want to see both sides of this. Okay? This could be a military project. This could be a secret black ops, military, hush-hush, conspiracy, Roswell, whatever thingy. Then again, it could be alien. Who knows? I mean, you got to think for yourselves, guys. Do we, could, it, could we possibly have a craft? Now, I have to say craft because I can't call an airplane or a sub because if it's going in both, I don't know what the hell to call it. But if we have a, a, a vehicle, a craft, they can go from the air to the water and water to the air. I mean, what the hell would you call it? But do we have that ability? Could we possibly have a sub? Let's describe it as a sub or a disc or whatever that can fly in the air and then enter the water and maneuver in the water as if it was maneuvering in the air and then leave the water just as easily. Think about that one. All right, now. If that's true, and we can do that, that means that's one of the most secretive weapons and devices we have, or they have, or whoever. Because we don't know whose it is. It could be Russian. It could be ours. I mean, you know, it, it, hell, it could be Canadian. <laughs> What's it on the boot? But anyway, the thing is, you got to think. you got to keep an open mind. Remember, I said pay attention. Look around. Pay attention to what's around you. Open your eyes. Open your mind. Don't take things at face value, guys. Do not take things at face value. The easiest way to hide something is under conspiracy. You put enough misinformation out there, along with enough information, and then it gets all jumbled up, and then nobody knows which way's up. I personally think that it's probably a military device. But, then again, with some of the eyewitness accounts, if there's validity to those, it's an alien craft. So I don't know which way to go on this one. That's why I have my email address open for you guys. One white wolf. 0706 at att.net. Man, email me as much as you want, man. My email box fills up all the time with crazy questions. The whole 2012 thing. The, the, that couple of weeks back where y'all thought I was against paranormal. I mean, pff, wolf tracks into the paranormal. Wee -wee -wee. Yeah, I'm against paranormal, right. 
I believe there's life out there, guys. I believe there's intelligent life out there. I believe th there is not only life out there that's just beginning, crawling out of the primordial ooze, but then there's life that's billions of years ahead of us. Now, in saying that, the ones crawling out of the primordial ooze are not going to be so much of a threat to us, and they don't give a... They aren't looking up. They could care less where we are. And the ones that are billions of years ahead of us, we're no threat, so they're not coming by to say hi. You know what I mean? So I think we're kind of stuck in the middle on that deal. We're catching up to the ones billions of years ahead of us, and we're so far ahead of the ones that are crawling out of the ooze that we don't really... They don't give a shit about us, and we don't give a shit about them. Okay? Now... So we're kind of in a safe zone, in my opinion. My and Everything's an opinion, dude. Just roll with it. I think we're stuck in the middle. We're no threat to nobody because we're not advanced enough, but we're high enough up that the lower ones can't even touch us. And the lower ones can't reach us anyway. They're learning how to walk, much less fly. And the higher ones, their weapons or technology or whatever is so far above us that we're not even a threat. Like my other show, talking about the Sechi website, uh, the Sechi Naval uh, uh, Satellite Site. If this thing's real, and it brushed off a solar flare like it wasn't there, and the same solar flare could have killed our entire planet, hello, we're no threat to this thing at all, under any circumstance. We don't have no. We could hurl the planet at this thing, and it wouldn't bother it. <laughs> all right. But anyway... And so you see the dilemma. Oh, by the way, this show, by the way, today, has a new sponsor. Coke with bacon. Coke with bacon. Bacon-flavored Coke. Try it. Enjoy it. Everything goes better with bacon. It's a lot like Parnelli Jelly. By the way, is one of my sponsors, Parnelli Jelly. When you're belly to belly, don't forget the Parnelli Jelly. Three convenient flavors, strawberry lime and double cheeseburger. Anyway, back to the show. Um... Always keep an open mind, guys. Really, that's that's the thing about paranormal. You have to keep an open mind. All these investigators, all these guys that do their job, um, they are open-minded. They're looking for the evidence or a closure aspect on the paranormal. They want, like I said in my last show, unless we can find something that we can physically touch, each and every one of us, someone in the crowd is going to doubt it. So we need. For you ghost hunters out there, we need a physical, a, a, a full body apparition in a container that everyone can see. So everyone can look at it with their own two eyes on the entire planet. So we can all go, all right, now ghosts exist. And for all you alien guys out there, all you, you know, ufologists and whatever, in order to prove your theories, we need a little gray or green man in a cage or a box or walking around with a set of Speedos on, whatever, that everyone can shake his hand and go, hey, how's it going? Welcome to Earth. And him make shit levitate or whatever and show us his shit. Hey, want to go on the tour? You know, here's the bathroom. Have some green spaghetti. You know, I mean, whatever. I mean, as silly as that sounds, guys, that's what it's going to take. Everybody on the entire planet has to see it with their own two eyes and touch it with their own hands in order for everyone to believe it. That's the dilemma paranormal's in. Because no matter how much we talk, no matter how much we prove, no matter how much we believe, there's always doubters out there, which I don't mind the doubters. I don't mind the haters. It don't bother me none. Okay? Doubters and haters are a necessary evil. They keep us straight. And a lot of you teams and shows and whatever, please stop thinking that you don't stink, that you can't be wrong. Okay? That's the weird thing. You can be. Why can't you be wrong? That's the thing I'm wondering. Why can't you be wrong? All right? Remember, you started off as a group just goofing off ghost hunting or UFO watching or stalking Bigfoot or the Yeti or the Chupacabra or whatever. And it was fascinating to you. Now you want to spread the knowledge to your friends and your friends want to spread it to their friends. All right, now it becomes 
paranormal. It becomes a paranormal society. I've already explained how to go ghost hunting, guys, and it's easy. Just check some of my older shows, I'll tell you how. Free of charge. I don't even charge. I don't care. It's so simple, it's retarded. All right? But in the long scheme, the large scheme of things, it's irrelevant anyway. I'm not against ghost hunting, but unless everybody on the planet is there to hear and see the computer readout and, and the thing move with their own two eyes, no one's going to believe what we find anyway. It's crazy. It's kind of like a catch-22. We're damned if we do, damned if we don't. If we don't do it, people still won't believe. If we do, if we do it, and show proof, hell, they still don't believe. The thing is, it's the, the ones we're trying to get, or the ones we're trying to impress or convince, are the ones that do believe. We're trying to get the information out there to them. Okay? And here's to all you believers out there, I'm telling you, because uh, it's a tough road. All you ghost teams, all you shows, look, I might knock a few of you, I might bash a few of you. I might do my thing and be old Bobby the Wolf Mullins and rip on you. But I got respect for you. Keep doing your thing. Keep getting knowledge to the masses. Eventually you get through those thick skulls of theirs. <laughs> so look, man, I, I you just you can't give up. And right, eventually something's got to give. On the paranormal side, technology's got to give. Okay? That's the thing that's got to give. Technology's got to give. Eventually, technology will catch up to the point to where we will actually have a physical being or energy or entity in a box, a container, or whatever we can put in a freaking zoo so everybody on the planet can come by and see it and go, Oh, look! They were right this whole time! Huh! Ah, there are ghosts! Imagine that! And, for all you ufologists out there and ancient alien theorists and all that, as soon as we get a little gray or a little green alien or whatever the hell comes down and put it in a cage or a container or whatever and display it in a zoo so everybody, every trailer park weirdo can come out and go, Oh, look, Ma, it's an alien. Uh, they are real. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. We thought we were the only ones in the whole universe. Yeah, great. Good job, Bubba. <laughs> you and your two teeth. You're the last chance of everything. <laughs> no. All right, now, with that being said, I hope I opened your eyes a little bit. The uh, Definitely look into the Shelburne and uh, the Lower Woods Harbor and the Shag Harbor incident. Look into that. Pull that up. Google it on YouTube. I mean, what's the harm, right? I gave you information. I want you to think. Think, guys. Think on your own. Stand on your own two feet. Don't take things at face value. Just because Bobby the Wolf Mullins tells you something doesn't mean it's true. It's just stuff I found out. Okay? I'm your shock jock. I'm your DJ. I'm the outlaw. Number one bad boy of paranormal. Okay? I'm just here doing my thing to enlighten the masses the best I can like all the other shows. <laughs> Only thing is you can see me. <laughs> uh, anyway, look, guys. I'm going to get off here. Remember, keep your eyes open. Keep your mind open. Pay attention. Look around. Look what walks by, crawls by, flies by, or slithers by. You never know what you're going to see or miss, guys, if you don't open them eyes. And if you get a picture of it, send it to old Bobby the Wolf Mullins. I just might put it on the show. And remember, peace and love, guys. Good luck in the Emmys. Oh, by the way, the Emmys are September 15th at 8 p.m. Central, I believe it is. Now, Go to ghosttalestv.com for all your information on the Paranormal Emmys. And your boy, Bobby the Wolf Mullins, is up for three with Wolf Tracks. Best web radio show of 2012. Most creative web radio show of 2012. And the one I needed y'all's help on, and I hope you gave me everything you got, the Viewer's Choice Award. Pay attention to the Emmys, guys. I think I might be giving one of them awards away. You never know. I might be a presenter. I don't know. I might just be there for the free beer. <laughs> you never know, man. Never know. But anyway, peace and love, guys, and holler at your boy.